This is example 5-11, where we're going to look at a Venturi meter. Um, so you can see our Venturi uh, tube right here. We have this constriction at B. We have go from 100 millimeters of a diameter down to 25 millimeters and back to 100. We also have a pressure gauge at point C that's given to us at 35 kilopascals. And then we have a, a manometer that's connecting points A and B and that has uh, mercury in it and it gives us what the pressure difference is, what the height differences are um, all around. And now we're asked to find the volumetric flow rate of the water through this uh, Venturi meter and uh, we're also supposed to draw the energy and the hydraulic grade lines. <clears throat> so how are we going to start? Well I think the first thing that we always want to do if we have a, vin a, a manometer, right, is we can figure out what the pressure difference between A and B is. So maybe we can start by writing the, the manometer equation between A and B. All right, so we can say we start at point A, so we got the pressure at A. Then we go downward along our little tube down to where uh, we switch from water to uh, mercury. So that's a height of 300 millimeters. So we're going downward, so positive 0 0.3 meters times gamma water. So that gets us to this point. So that means we're at the same pressure at this point. So we can go from here and go upward. So we can go upward by 15 centimeters times gamma Hg. That gives us here. And then we can go up the last 150, right? Total is 300. This part is 150. So minus 0 0.15 meter times gamma water. Open all that is equal to PB. Let's slide that into the end here. All right, so we can simplify that a little bit, right? That means, uh, or maybe we just write it in one step here, right? So if we want to solve this for PA over uh, minus PB, PA minus PB, right? That means we have to get all this to the other side. However, we have two terms that involve uh, water, right? We have 30 centimeters minus 15, so we'd have 15 centimeters. That's now negative because it was positive. The mercury gets positive, so it can be 1.5, 0 0.15 meters times uh, the specific weight of mercury minus 0 0.15 meters times specific weight of water. Um, so we can pull out the 0 0.15 and then just have the difference between the two specific weights would be the pressure difference. Now I can plug in numbers, although I'm not sure we actually need them, but let's do it anyway, 1.0.15 meters. Uh, the gamma here, we'll have to multiply that by G, I guess, to get uh, a density. Uh, let me see here. So we have our, yeah, so it would be rho times G. So it's 13,550 kilograms per cubic meters times 9.81 meters per second squared minus that one we know by heart, Newton per cubic meters gives us 18,467.325 Newton per square meters or Pascals. Now let's make sure that we did our conversion correctly here, right? So we have kilograms per meter per second squared. So this combination gives us Newtons, Newtons per cubic meter multiplied by meter. All right, I think that is the right combination. So now we have PA minus PB. Um, and then I think as the next step, we'll use the continuity equation to figure out what our relationship is between uh, our velocities here. Let's go to the next page so we can say uh, 
continuity equation. If we want to have a continuity equation, we need to have a control volume. Based on control volume of half of the Venturi tube. Let's have a look. Maybe a different color. It's red. All right, so we'll have something where we go through here on the inside of our tube, across and back up. So that will be our our control volume. Now what can we say about this control volume? Well, we'll have average velocities and uh, it's a fixed control volume and it's incompressible. All right, so we can put all those things in. So we'd have uh, we have uh, incompressible incompressible fixed control volume average velocities what does that mean for us well it means incompressible and fixed control volume means that our d rho v dt term is equal to zero because neither of them changing and average velocities just means that we can directly write out what our uh, what our integrals are. Just as a reminder, right, of course, our the areas are going to be positive, pointing outwards, and we'll have velocities going this direction and in that direction. So at A will be negative and at B will be positive. So that means we get minus VA times AA plus VB times AB, is that in the middle B or C? Let's make sure now it's B, is equal to zero. That means if I solve this all, for instance, for VB, of course it's gonna be the faster or the higher of the two velocities, right? If I solve this and I get AA divided by AB times V a. These are both uh, circular patterns, so pi over 4 times dA squared divided by 4 over pi times dB squared times VA. Those cancel out, so I get, uh, I can combine these together, right? So I'd get dA over dB squared times VA which means I get it was like 100 millimeters and 25 millimeters. So I get 100 millimeters divided by 25 millimeters squared times VA. Don't need to change what my, uh, what my, uh, um, what my units are, because if we just divide, right, then units cancel out. Now 100 divided by 25, of course, is 4. 4 squared is 16. So I get 16 times VA. So VA is going to be 16 times higher than VB. All right. I think that's all the information that we can gain. So now we want to go through and find what the velocity is. Right. So to do that, we will, because from the velocity, we can get the, uh, the discharge, right? So what we want to do is we're going to write a Bernoulli equation from A to B. They're the same streamline. Uh, it's water, so it's incompressible and inviscid, and it's steady. So we have all the things going for us. So we can say Bernoulli from A to B. A to B, right? That be, of course, by now everybody knows, PA over gamma plus VA squared over 2G plus ZA is equal to 
VPB over gamma plus VB over 2G, it's VB squared, plus ZB. All right, so what do we do? Well, we kind of have a relationship between BA and uh, PA and PB, right? That's what we found somewhere up here. We have a relationship between VA and VB, right? So it means basically we get two extra equations, which means we could have three unknowns. Right now we have one, two, three, uh, four unknowns, but we can also figure out what ZA and ZB are, right? So we can just put a datum and say datum at center line of pipe, which means that ZA equal to ZB, and for good measure, let's throw ZC in there as well, because we'll need that later, equal to zero. Okay, that slightly makes our equation easier, right? So we have PA over gamma plus VA over 2G, the VA squared, is equal to PB over gamma plus V b squared over 2g all right so with that we can now start plugging stuff in right we can start solving uh, to have our two velocities on one side and then two pressures on the other side so if we bring pb over right then we have pa over gamma minus p b over gamma on one side and we'll get VB squared over 2G minus VA squared over 2G on the other side. Now we can write these a little easier, right? We can, we can just combine all these things together. So we'd have 1 over gamma times PA minus PB is equal to 1 over 2g of vb squared minus va squared bring over the 2g so we have 2g divided by gamma pa minus pb is equal to vb squared minus va squared all right, so now we can go and grab our PA minus PB and stick it in there. So we can say it'd be same as 2 over G. And you know what? Let's, let's go back here and let's just make this very clear, right? Because we have two gammas floating around, so maybe we'll just make sure that this is gamma water everywhere. Just to make sure. Not because we always have the, the mercury also floating around. So we do that, and then let's scroll up and find our PA minus PB. That's right here. We could stick the number in, but let's stick this expression is pretty simple. Let's put the expression in. So it'll be 0 0.15 gamma of mercury minus water. So we'd have 0 0.15 meter times gamma mercury minus gamma water. That was our PA minus PB. And then we also found out what uh, VB is in terms of VA. Right, we said VB is equal to 16 VA. So we'd have VB is 16 VA. All of that squared minus VA squared. That means we can get we can pull that out there, right? So 2 times 0 0.15 is 0 0.3 meters times G over gamma water times, oops, not HG, gamma HG, gamma HG minus gamma water. 16 squared is 256. <clears throat> And of course, VA squared is VA squared minus VA squared. That's an easy thing to do. Um, let's see what we want to do over here. 
So let's pull in that gamma water. All right, so we'd have gamma Hg over gamma water. We have gamma water over gamma water equal to 255 Va squared, right? 256 minus 1. <clears throat> All right, let's see, of course, over here, that cancels out to one. And uh, we're given the density of mercury, not the specific weight. So we can just go switch that first one to densities, right? Because of the, just the, the Gs would cancel. So we'll just skip that step. So zero times, 0 0.3 times G, and then density over density of water minus one equal to 255 VA squared. Now, gamma HG over gamma water. Um, of course, we could also write down that that's just S HG, right? That would be the specific gravity, but might as well leave it in like this because we're not given the specific gravity, we're given the density. <clears throat> all right, so then if we want to solve all that for VA, which is what we want to have so that we can get our flow rate, right? That means we need to take the square root of all this, so 0 0.3 meter times G divided by 255 times rho HG over rho water minus 1. And then if we plug in values, 0 0.3 meters, 9.81 meters per second squared over 255, 13,550 kilograms per cubic meters divided by 1,000 kilograms per cubic meters. Oop, I'm missing the minus one, minus one see what we get unit wise right so the kilogram cubic meters cancel out which is good because the one doesn't have a unit and then we're left with square meters over square seconds so that gives us a velocity so we get 0 0.380581 meters per second now we're not asking for the velocity we're asking for the discharge but that means we can just do q is equal to VA times AA, which means that will be VA, which we calculated earlier, or we just calculated, I guess, times pi over four times DA squared is equal to 0 0.380581 meters per second, pi over four, the diameter at A, right? that was the one that's on the outside, so 100 millimeters or 0 0.1 meters, 0 point meters, let's not forget the square, and that gives me 0 0.0029891 cubic meters per second, or 2.99 times 10 to the minus 3 meters cubed per second. So that's our volumetric discharge. That was one of the things that we got asked. The other one was to find the, uh, the energy grade line and the uh, hydraulic grade line. So start with the energy grade line. energy grade line EGL what do we have well we have we have no pumps no pumps no turbines no frictional losses, that means EGL is horizontal line. Excellent. <clears throat>
that makes it nice and easy. We just have to calculate one spot and that will give us our value. Now I could go through and calculate multiple points, but we really only have one point at the moment where we have all the information. Right? We could go and figure out what uh, P, A, and B are based on, on P, C, but we'll just, we'll just calculate it for location P because that's where we know what the pressure is because we have that pressure gauge right there. So we can say E is equal to P, C over gamma of water plus VC squared over 2G plus ZC. We already know what uh, ZC is, right? That's zero. So it's PC over gamma water. Now, the velocity at C has to be the same as, a, as at A because they're the same diameter and it's incompressible and steady. So we can say plus VA squared over 2G plus zero, which means we get uh, PC was 35 kilopascals, so 10 to the 3 newtons per cubic meters, divided by 9,810 uh, newtons per cubic meters, plus the velocity that we calculated up there, 0 0.380581 meters per second all that squared divided by two times 9.81 meters per second squared and that gives me 3.5752 meters excellent so that's our energy grade line be just a straight line at at whatever that height is now for the hydraulic grade line, this is not going to be a straight line, right? because we have a change in velocity. So our hydraulic grade line, HGL, it is going to decrease from A to B um, as the velocity increases because of pipe constriction. All right, gets the area gets smaller, so my velocity goes up, which means the pressure goes down. So con constriction. And then from B to C uh, increases back to original. All right. That means we have to now figure out what the hydraulic grade line or the hydraulic head is at uh, both A and B. And C is going to be the same as A. Right, so let's just calculate them for those two spots. So we can say that HA is equal to HC is equal to our energy that we calculated before minus VA squared over 2G. All right, the energy that we just calculated up here, all right, that was PC over gamma, PC over gamma, plus VA squared over 2G. Right, I'm getting that from up here. That's what our energy was, minus VA squared over 2G it means those two cancel to zero. So we're left with PC over gamma. So that was 35 times 10 to the 3. And now Newton per meter squared 
divided by 9810 newton per cubic meters leaves us meters which is good um, and the value is 3.56779 meters so we can see it's pretty close right a couple centimeters difference in in between the uh, the energy head and the hydraulic head all right so that was at a and at c of course now means we also need to calculate it at b should be quite a bit lower in there because the velocity is much higher so if we say h b is going to be e minus v b squared over 2g again our e was pc over gamma plus va squared over 2g uh, vb we figured out was was 16 times va right? so 16 va squared over 2g we already learned right that that 16 squared is 256 so pc over gamma so we have minus 256 plus 1 so we get minus 255 va squared over 2g or 35 times 10 to the 3 newton per meter squared over 9810 newtons per square meter minus 255 it's gonna get a little tight here 0 0.380581 meters per second squared divided by 2 times 981 meters per second squared and that is 1.68 five to nine meters so that would be our hydraulic head there all right so let's draw our two lines to finish this off give ourselves a little bit of a location here so that's our our line let's put let's say this is a halfway through more or less is b and we get c at the end we said that our, high, our energy grade line is just a straight line. So it actually starts somewhere uh, before A and gets past A, uh, past C. That's nice and steady. We can say that is the energy grade line EGL is equal to 3. Point, uh, that would be 5, 7. 3.57 f57 not 58 5 let me see 57 yeah 57 meters oh no that's our hydraulic grade line that's the one we're looking for what was our energy grade line that is 358 okay 358 meters and then for our hydraulic grade line well we know it starts uh, flat up here, right? For think about this, scroll back up, right? Before it gets into its constriction, the uh, the cross section is going to be a constant, so it's going to have a constant velocity. Once it comes here, velocity is going to go up and up and up, and then get back down. So we'll have starts out flat and then comes downward. Let's get ourselves kind of an aiming point somewhere here, right? So we come in flat, and go down and then we do the opposite in this direction so that would be our uh, hydraulic grade line we can say hgl over here is 3.57 meters so almost the same as the energy grade line and then in the middle of the venturi meter the hydraulic grade line is at 1.68 meters so uh, somewhere around half of that all right so now we have our energy grade line our, our hydraulic grade line figured out what our flow rate is our volumetric flow rate and with that i think we've answered all the questions